content is king. I don't yep. believe that you can produce too much content because there's all these filters and things like that. And if you put enough out there, more people will see it. Welcome to the Matt Literacy Project. This is a show about all things real estate, business, marketing, and entrepreneurship. Each show consists of myself, Matt Literacy, and a guest. Today, we are having no guests because we're doing another special edition to talk about the opportunity that is in the market, and this is Season 3, Ep 7, Why Now is the Best Time to Buy. You know, you know, today the date is October 7th, okay? And I've been telling everybody since February, now I didn't predict COVID or the civil unrest or anything like that, but I told everybody since fe- in February that I thought mid-September till mid-December would be the worst market for sellers since 2011, which was the bottom. And typically during election season, the market is tough. I thought this would be the bloodiest election in modern history. So far, it's shaping out to be as of October 7th. Uh, And so what we wanted to do was talk about, you know, why we thought this was such a good time to buy. So we did what we've been doing is we've asked our buyers, our sellers, Uh, You know, our marketing people, our assistants, our agents, everybody out there, we were asking, why do they think it's a good time to buy? What are some questions they have about buying now, et cetera? And these came from, uh, I mean, I don't know, there's like six or seven different sources and they just kind of put them in an email and this is what I have to do. So I'm just going to read them off of of why my opinion is now the time to buy. So uh, first question, why is now the best time to buy with a surplus of inventory? Uh, when you have a lot of options, you have more choices, which means that you have a little bit more leverage. In the spring, when there's no inventory and everything's selling, you know, if, if, let me give you an example. In the spring, you might want to see five properties within like a 24-hour period. So like five units come on the market, you want to see them. By the end of the day, four of the five of those have sold, okay? And then you're looking for off-market places. Today, if you want to see five properties... By the end of the day, all five are still there. So what does that do? That gives you, as a consumer, a buyer, more leverage. So that's why now is a good time to buy with the extra inventory. Can buyers stretch their budgets more with historic with a historic low rates? Yeah. So this is another perfect reason of why now is the time to buy. The rates are super low. So you could actually buy more property. Average in American history, 7%. We're below 4%. That's like stupid. They're like giving you money. Do you think buyers are becoming too picky with the surplus of options they have? Could this have a negative effect when the market starts to level out? Yes. Um, A lot of people are um, seeing more places than they probably normally do. Uh, I always say, statistically speaking, that I hate fall uh, and early winter buyers, and I hate spring and uh, uh, early uh, summer sellers because they're they're the ones in control, and usually when they're in control, you get a lot of cocky people. So they want to see more options. They're picky. They think everything should be perfect. And, you know, you as a buyer out there, you have to know you're still not buying new construction. So although you do have the power and are in the driver's seat, you have to be realistic of what you are buying. Um, How many of your clients are investors who are just buying because the rates are so low? Not that many. You know, the, the investor market is very, very minimal right now because the rental market is shit. And I think that's I think that's terrible. I think right now is a phenomenal time to buy an investment condo. Yes, it might be vacant for a month or two be, before rents because the rental market's tough. But like, if you've always wanted to buy an investment condo, strike now. You're going to get a deal on it, and in January, or February, it's going to rent right away. Like this, this whole situation is going to go away. Um, do you think deals? Do you have any deals canceling because people are seeing more Im- new inventory hit the market every day? No. I mean, you know, the FOMO, the grass is always greener. I, 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 I'm not seeing as many people cancel because of that. I am seeing buyers cancel uh, because of things like, you know, uh, inspection items, they want too much, or they just kind of are second guessing stuff, but, uh, second guessing the decision, but has nothing to do with a, a new inventory coming on the market. Um, why do you think the new, when do you think the inventory levels uh, will even out? Uh, October 7th today, give it next week, October 14th. I think once that hits, uh, people are going to start deciding to pull their place off the market. So now guys, right now is when you want to buy, because in a few weeks from now, inventory is going to start falling off the market, especially once we hit holiday season. Once you hit Turkey season, boom, off all this, like half the market is going to come off. Also, 
We'll know who the new president is. Well, hopefully, we'll know who the president is at that time, which also is going to lead to less uncertainty, which will lead to a better market. I'm telling you right now, I will put as much money on the table, cash, against anybody else who's willing to bet me that I think Q1 next year is going to be one of the best first quarters you could see. So if you want to get something, do it now. How many multiple bid situations are you seeing? Uh, I'm honestly probably seeing about one a week. Which, which sounds high, but you guys have to remember that we sell on average, even in this market, about one property a day. Um, so we, we still are seeing multiple bids. It's not like non-existent, but it's super rare. I mean, we, we had a property on the market for a year that we got two bids on randomly and got full price. How does that happen? I don't know. Another reason why I drink wine every night of the week. Um, how, can, uh, builders uh, builders. how can sellers stand out against a surplus of inventory? Um, you know, you know, buyers have the control here. So sellers, you need to make sure that your place is a price, right? And B move in ready. Okay. A lot of people don't want to do any work. The thing is right now is we're heading into the the winter where it starts getting dark at four o'clock. So if your place is, it's, you know, it's cold out, it's vacant. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't show well, you know, make sure your property stage, make sure it looks the best it can look because you're only going to have one opportunity with these people looking at maybe, you know, 30 or 40 places before they're making a decision. At what point do you tell sellers to stop dropping the price of their home? I mean, uh, there's, it's rare I'm telling people to drop their price right now. I mean, what I do, you don't want to just drop your price sellers just to drop your price. What you want to do is you want to see your neighbors. If none of your neighbors are selling, okay, and you guys are all priced around the same price, there's no point to drop it. And, and, and like you look at the comps and everything kind of looks well. You know, at a certain point, what you want to do is just, you know, evaluate the market and, you know, make the decision if it's the right time to drop. Now, if you're priced at 500 and all your neighbors are priced at 500 and they've all sold, that usually means that maybe yours isn't as good or you're overpriced, so then you would drop your price, okay? But don't just drop your price to drop your price because you think, well, if I drop a 10, maybe that will sell it, you know? Um, are prices inflated right now, mainly in suburbs, due to such a high demand? Uh, yeah, so the suburb market, you know, we don't work the suburb market, uh, is completely inflated in my opinion. The suburb market now is where the city market was in May. So again, when everybody's sitting here telling me that the market's terrible and that you know, you're an idiot if you buy right now and the market's going to drop and we're going to like totally die because that's how everybody talks these days. Like I'm like, hey, remember in May when nobody wanted to work with buyers, they only wanted to work with sellers because everything flew off the shelves and July went down as one of the best Julys in the history of Chicago? Well, guess what? In the, su- uh, in the suburbs, all these seller agents... Uh, don't want to deal with buyers because they only want to deal with sellers because everything's flying off the market. Come talk to me in two months. Let's see how cocky those people are now. You know, I, I also tell everybody, like, don't be a prisoner of the moment. I say this a million times. Like, markets go in cycles. Yes, the suburbs are a little bit inflated right now because there's no inventory. So when you have no inventory and a ton of demand, guess what? Prices go up. In the city, we had to have a lot of inventory and not a lot of demand. Again, these things go in cycles. Uh, how long do you expect the rates to remain low? No idea. I mean, honestly, I definitely think through the end of the year, first part of next year, you know, by the spring of next year, could it change? It's possible. I mean, it has to see, you know, if we have a change of guard, I don't know what the Dems will want to do. Who, if, if I could predict the future, I've said this a million times, I definitely wouldn't be selling real estate. What advice do you have for first time home, home buyers in a market like this? I mean, I like to strike when there's blood in the water. Like right now, strike, buy. This is the time to buy. That's what I would tell a first-time buyer. You look in the city, buy now. Don't be nervous to do it. Buy now. Are you still taking on new listings? Sure. I'm always taking on new business. I I mean, I get it. The listing market is tough right now. But, I mean, I like things that are difficult. I'm I'm messed up in the head. I enjoy to prove people wrong. I enjoy to kind of, you know, uh, show people where everybody else says something can't be done. That I, I like to show people that things can be done. So, of course, I'll take new listings on. But... The only exception is, is that like, if it's a seller that's super rude and there's a lot of people who are, and they want way too much in price, then I'm definitely going to pass. Uh, why do you think, uh, what do you think average market time looks like with a market like this? I mean, you know, going into like August, it was 88 days. We won't know the actual market time until, you know, like, you know, the fall market time to like December, but I would predict that average market time is going to be about 120 days or so. It could be more, but I would definitely say it's got to be around 120 days. Um, How do you help buyers navigate all the options they are seeing now? Narrow it down. 
You know, I get a lot of clients like, hey, I want to live in Lincoln Park, Lakeview, River North, Surville, Gold Coast, South Loop, West Loop. What about North Center? And then I've heard like, you know, Avondale's cool. I'm like, okay, so then you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Like the same shit, the same type of properties are in a lot of big, a lot of same neighborhoods. Okay, so like Lincoln Park, Lakeview properties are somewhat the same as Wicker Park, Bucktown. Yes, I know somebody out there is like, no, man, they're totally different. For the most part, they're somewhat the same. A high rise in River North isn't that much different than a high rise in Streeterville. Yes, there's different properties. My point is, Try to figure out what type of property you want. Do you want a high rise? Do you want a walk up? Okay, you want a walk up. Boom, we just eliminated the you know the heart of the city. Now you want a walk up. Do you want to live on the west side in Wicker Park, Bucktown, West Town, or do you want to live in the east side, close to the lake, Lakeview, Lincoln Park? Boom, you don't want to live by the lake. You want to live on the west side. That's what I do. So it's a process of elimination. You know what happens? I would say the worst thing a buyer can do is have too many areas, not be focused on a location. And I guarantee you, nine out of 10 of those people will end up being renters. So I always tell people, focus on where you wanna live first. Would you personally invest in more real estate just because interest rates are, are low? I don't care about the rates. I will be buying at least two more properties this fall because I like to make money just like anybody else does. And I think the stock market is a little bit, you know, uh, tricky right now. And I'm sure somebody's out there like, well, Matt, I can navigate the real. Uh, the, you know, trading better than anybody. And I'm sure you can. I, I mean, I'm not a, a stock trader. I, I'm not as good at trading as I am about real estate. I'm not saying I don't have any money in trading, but I will tell you, or in the stocks, but I will tell you that I know that right now I could get a good investment property for cheap because everybody else is nervous to buy one. So I'm taking my own advice and saying when everybody else is uh, nervous to buy, that's when you buy. So I'm going to buy at least one to two more properties. I'm, I'm targeting at least two, but I, I'm not just going to buy something if I don't like something. Uh, what type of loans are not being approved right now? Um, the biggest challenging loans are ones on multi-units. You know, if you're buying a multi-unit building, you need to put down 40% if you're not going to live in them. And those are the toughest loans to get right now. So um, that's the ones I would say are the toughest. Will Chicago bounce back from all of the civil unrest? Do you expect to see more rentals happening and more, uh, or more purchases? Um, yes, I think that we'll bounce back from the civil unrest. I do not think Chicago is going to go away. I think Chicago is the Mecca. I think it's the third coast. I have a lot of confidence in Chicago. I know the tax situation sucks. I know the fair tax situation sucks. Vote no against it. And I know that, um, you know, the, the civil, uh, situation is tough right now, but I do think things are going to come back. And I do think the sales and the rental market will personally come back very strong. And I think they'll both come back pretty much on an even foot. Uh, do you think the low rates have helped increase your sales this year? Um, yes and no. I mean, we definitely have more sales because of the rates being lower, but I don't think we wouldn't have had just as many sales if the rates were a little bit higher. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure I, I'm sure it does help a little bit. Let's yeah, let's let's go back on. It. I'm sure we probably have a few more sales because of the rates, but I, I don't know if that's the only reason why we're doing well this year. How is a high demand affecting your business? Is it positive or negative? Um, there's not high demand. Um, so, uh, maybe, maybe you mean like, how's a high inventory affecting your business? And the high inventory is, is having a negative impact because it's very stressful and, uh, all day long I get yelled at, but like I tell buyers is that this is the opportunity. So the, you know, the negativity about the, the high inventory is that, you know, uh, it's, it's a lot of pressure, but the positivity is like, I tell my buyers is like, this is a great time to buy. Do you think sellers in the downtown market are des more desperate than usual? I do think there are some. I do think there's a lot of sellers who are, who are very wealthy um, and who have bought maybe an in-town, and uh, which is a pied de for all you fancy people out there, um, and decided that, hey, um, you know, I don't need this place anymore. I don't really give a shit. I, they may have picked it up at the bottom of the market in 11 or 12. They got a great deal, and they don't care about selling below comps. And I would say that those people are desperate because they are they are nervous about the city. They they may be living in Florida, and all they saw was uh, the last thing they know about Chicago was the looting. So they're willing to cut their price. But I'm not saying that's everybody. I, I do think that there are a small fraction of people that are like that. What is competition like with other buyers? I mean, there's almost no competition. It's 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 I, I I'm telling you guys, in end of April to the first week of July, buyers were scared. They'd be like, we got to make an offer today. Like we'd leave a property at 5 p.m. Now, again, guys, this was a few months ago. We'd leave a property at 5 p.m. And I'd have to race to the office or like start screaming at my system to get this you know, offer in ASAP. Now, if they see something at 5 p.m., they're like, I don't know, you know, let's sleep on it. Get back to tomorrow, maybe the day after. That's what it's like. It's very casual. So I would say that the, there, there is no competition. 
And that's why, again, we've titled this podcast, Now is the Time to Buy. Is inventory going to keep going up? Uh, no. I think, I think we're peaking. I, I, and, I'm, I, and here's another reason why. So, you know, people can tell me all the stats and all this bullshit stuff all day long. I always tell people, nobody, nobody in, 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 in New York can tell me what's happening in Chicago's market better than I can. And I know I sound like a total douchebag when I say it, and I hate myself for even saying it like that. But the reality is, is that we sell, you know, we're one of the, the, the biggest realtors in the city, and we sell some of the most real estate. So I could tell you what's going to go on because I'm seeing it. Every single day of the week, I look at what comes on the market. It's one of the main things I do. Every day, I see what comes on the market. I'm already seeing less properties come on the market this week. So again, today's Wednesday. I'm seeing less properties come on the market this week than I saw last week. And I've been telling everybody we're going to start to peak, and I can already feel the peak. And guess what? We have 130-plus listings. I've had about a third of my sellers tell me already is that, hey, Matt, we're going to give it a couple more weeks, and then we're going to pull it. And guess what? I talk to other brokers all day. And you know what they tell me? Hey, a lot of my sellers are thinking about pulling their properties. So again, guys, we are peaking on inventory. So buy now while you can before all the inventory lows uh, rolls off. When will it stop? Just answer that question. It's like I, it's like I foresaw that would come. Uh, what will change when the election is over? I, I confidence will come back. You know, I, I, there's a lot of people out there that if Trump gets elected, this is going to happen, or if Biden gets elected, this is going to happen. Cry, cry, complain, complain. Everybody's bitching about both sides. I don't really give a shit who wins. I'll tell you right now that I will know that, like, the confidence will come back because there's no unknown. It's kind of like people get really nervous when a building is going to go up. Uh, they're like, I don't know what it's going to look like, blah, blah, blah. And you kind of see the values drop in that building for a little bit. And then all of a sudden the building's up. And then everybody's like, wow, that's a great view. I'm like, yeah, but before the building went up, everybody thought, the, you know, the view would suck. It's the same thing with the election. You know, people just are nervous about the uncertainty, but you, you know, the market will be fine once the election is over with. What can we expect come January? Uh, we can expect the market to go gangbusters. I think Q1 is going to be amazing. The election's over with, civil unrest can be over with, uh, and, and I think a lot of the civil unrest is kind of fueled by the election. And I think that, um, you know, COVID is going to be pretty much on its way out. And I'm not saying that the disease has gone away, but I think we'll have a better understanding of exactly where it is. And if you think I'm crazy, come talk to me about where we thought about where COVID was in April compared to today. And another four to five months on the question. I mean, we can't be locked up forever. Do you think, um, oh man, somebody probably asked this because I say this all the time. Do, do you think people get rich in bad markets? Yeah. That's, that's the main time when you get rich. You never get rich in good markets. You get rich in bad markets because everybody, you know, the general population will always look left and the people who look right are the ones that win. And the people who look right during bad times are the ones that win because everybody else is scared. When everybody else is pulling out, that's when you put more money in. Uh, who would you suggest pays now? Um, owner-occupied buyers or investors? Who would I suggest pays now? Uh, maybe who would I suggest buys now? Uh, Owner occupied buyers or investors? I think we're going to see more owner occupied people buying today than investors. And the reason is, is that I think a lot of investors are nervous about the vacancy rate that's going to happen uh, from the lack of uh, rentals that are coming off the shelves right now. Are banks being more cautious with loans with the low interest rates? In certain scenarios, the banks are. Uh, on investment properties, on multi units, uh, like I said earlier, they are. And on self-employed properties, they're being very cautious. Otherwise, it's pretty much business as usual. When do I think rates will go up? We answer that. Are you seeing people rent or sell their homes faster? Uh, I'm seeing places sell much quicker than they are renting. This is the first time in my career I've ever seen homes sell faster than renting. I've said this before, but usually after Labor Day, people flip their homes from sales to rentals. Uh, and uh, the you know typically, the, they rent really quickly. This year, they're not renting really quickly, which is making inventory stick. Uh, and that's making the rental market more difficult. And all these big luxury, new high-rise rental markets are getting crushed right now. And the reason I know they're getting crushed, they're sending us gifts trying to make sure that we show their properties. If somebody's sending us gifts to make sure we show their properties, that usually means they're struggling and they want to make sure that we get on the radar. Um, would you buy right now? Answer that, of course. Absolutely would buy. Uh, if you can't sell and you need to get out, what do you do? I mean, it's a shitty situation. You have to have patience. It's the worst thing that I could tell any seller. I mean, you know, I, I'm right there with you. I got my own place in the market. I, I need to sell. I don't need to be sitting on a, on a huge mortgage. But at the, real, the, the end of the day, you can't change the market. You will be through this in three months. But there's no point in, you know, taking your place to 500000 to a dollar just to get rid of it. You know, you just have to eat three more months of mortgage. And, and it will sell. It 100% will sell. It's just a matter of time. So my advice to you is just be patient on it. 
Um, are you recommending clients to list at a lower price point than you normally would? In certain scenarios, uh, you know, everything's relative. Uh, again, if it, if the last price was five hundred thousand, I'm not going to tell them the price at four fifty. I may say, hey, you know, let's price at four ninety. Let's undercut the market a little bit. Um, but I'm, I'm not saying anybody to do anything crazy because I, I don't see the point of just like dropping price to drop price. Um, exactly how short is this window for buyers to take advantage of high inventory levels? I, I've already said this. Two weeks. Two weeks, inventory is going to peak and then it's going to start coming off. You know, every day we get closer to Turkey Day, the market's going to shift because the election's going to be over with. And, you know, most sellers are going to come off the market. We'll have kind of like a dead zone. It's going to be no man's land from like, you know, like probably Thanksgiving to Christmas this year because there's not going to be many sales, which isn't good for us or, you know, anybody that's in the sales industry. But, you know, it's going to be kind of a wild ride, I think, starting January. Um, what would be the best investments to make right now? Um, I would say any investment in a high-rise condo in River North Surville, Gold Coast, or the Loop would probably be the best pl uh, place where you could probably get the best deal right now because that's where the inventory is the highest. Uh, are any brokers giving away part of their commission to get deals done? Um, you know, it's very rare a broker will give any money away. I mean, it's, I, always, I always tell people... A lot of buyers and sellers are always quick to tell a broker to give money away, right? And I always say, I, I, I personally take offense to this. I know you're probably watching this and think I'm an asshole for it. But I say, like, listen, if you went to work, you're Joe Schmo, and you work at a job Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and you, you go to work, you, you, know, you work your ass off, and then at the end of the day, uh, your boss goes to give you a paycheck, and you do $500 that week, and the boss is like, you know what? The, the company didn't do as well as we thought. So instead of your normal $500 paycheck that we you know, guaranteed you, we're just going to give you $350. How would you feel? You would say, well, that's not right. That's not how it's supposed to be. Well, that's the same thing with brokers. You know, it, we still have bills to pay. You know, we only make money if we sell a property. The commission is the only way we make our livelihood. There's, there's no, there's no you know, fail safe. There's no backup plan for this. There's no salary. It all just comes out of our own pocket. So you know, if a broker has to toss in some money, honestly, it's because they're desperate. It's because maybe they, didn't, they don't have any money. Maybe because they have to pay their mortgage this year or this month, and they don't have any mo other money to pay other than the commission. So they'd rather, you know, throw a thousand bucks to get the deal done uh, in order to be able to uh, close the deal to pay the mortgage. I think that's terrible. That that's what it comes down to. And I feel bad anytime a broker has to throw money into the pot because I know at that point they're completely desperate for it. Me personally, I almost never throw any money into the pot because. Honestly, I, I don't think $1,000 is going to really change the buyer or seller's life. And I think it's the easiest way for them just to be like, oh, it's no big deal that they're making money off it. But it's like I always compare to the scenario. I'm like, well, it's no big deal for you to not get paid this week when you go to work either. So, you know, I, I think buyers and sellers out there should kind of really understand that that's where the brokers get their money from. And, and especially considering that most brokers' business is down 25 plus percent. You know, I just don't think it's right for them to do it. So, yeah, if you are seeing people throw their commission in, it's because literally they can't pay their bills. What do you say? Why? What do you say to frustrated clients with property? What do I say to frustrated clients um, whose properties aren't moving? Uh, I just answer this. Uh, try to be patient with it. You got to try to be patient. Things will move. Uh, I, I understand that, you know, trust me, we're getting yelled at a lot. But a lot of times they're yelling at us because they're just frustrated with the situation. But, you know, patience is everything right now. What new tactics are you using to push properties? I mean, we're trying to get in in front of as many different people as possible. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, we've been doing VR and social ads. I mean, we're trying social ads in different markets. Uh, you know, we're calling brokers in different markets. You know, we figured people around here know about it. So we're trying to get it to, you know, to people in the suburbs and people in different cities who, who normally have a lot of clientele moving here. Um, what, uh, what's making deals flow right now? What's making them die? Uh, a lot of deals are, are moving because of, you know, the, the deals that are out there, you know, the pricing uh, and things that are making them die are just like some people are second guessing because of the market and they're they're reading the paper. And if there's a bad headline that day, you may see somebody pull out because they're too nervous about it. Um, what does it mean if a broker uh, helping a buyer where there's that doesn't make sense? Um, so essentially, this person trying to ask me if. Um, you know, how does a broker help a buyer if there's too much inventory? It's kind of like I said earlier, uh, you want to try to help uh, your buyers narrow it down so they're a little bit more focused on uh, what they're looking for. Are buyers uh, seeing way too many properties? Some buyers are. I mean, sometimes when there's too many options, you know, even if you're just, you're, you know, you are narrowed down to the River North and then you want to see 50 properties, 
sometimes when you see too many properties, it does become overwhelming. It, it's all about narrowing down. You know, make sure you see the right properties and make a decision. You know, the grass isn't always going to be greener. You're always going to think something's better than what you go with. But I mean, at the end of the day, you, you have to be comfortable with the decision you make. And everybody moves at a different pace. And some people are going to need to see 100 properties and some people are going to need to see two properties. Um, is uh, COVID still slowing down showings or having, uh, or is the impact done? It's definitely still slowing down pro, uh, showings, especially from our international. So let's face it, the international market is dead. Chicago, New York, LA, Miami, a lot of these cities typically have a lot of international markets. Considering that people from China, India, you know, Middle East, Europe can't travel here, it's affecting our business. And the fall winter market is a lot of times propped up by the international market. So the fact that we don't have the international market, is definitely slowing us down. Is too many options a good thing or bad thing for buyers? I, I actually think it's a bad thing. It's kind of like when you go to a restaurant and you have 50 things on the menu and you kind of want 30 of them and then you kind of have a tough time making a decision and then when you eat it, you're kind of disappointed that you didn't order something else. You know, it's the same thing with properties. When there's too many of them on the market, a lot of times you kind of feel like there's, you know, some disappointment. I kind of like it better when there's less stuff on the market. Um, is it going to be hard to match your success this uh, next year compared to this year? No. I, I feel like we should always be better uh, the, the year after than we are this year. Uh, and that's because we're going to learn. So we're going to figure out what we did really well this year and we're going to implement it to next year and then take all the stuff that we didn't do well on and improve on it next year. Um, will you ever consider not having a physical, physical office location? No, I, I think you always need some sort of office, uh, working remotely. I don't think really makes sense. Uh, what's your plans, uh, with my current listing patients? I'm probably, honestly, I'm probably gonna take it off the market in the next month and a half and just let it sit. Uh, just eat money, but uh, that's that's my plan in my my place. Um, will you ever consider? Oh no! Any other smart strategy you've seen other agents use to combat the inventory surplus? A big thing you see some brokers do in, in a market like this is that they offer bonuses, broker bonuses. Um, that that's a big one that people try to do in, in tougher markets. I personally am not a big fan of it because I, I don't. I think you can help steer your client towards a property, but I also don't think you should make too much money, you know, for a sale. And I, I, I do think that like, you're kind of like doing more what's in your best interest and what's in your client's best interest when you're kind of trying to go for that. But I mean, there are some people who are super money hungry. So, I mean, I, I know it, it does work in certain, in certain types of properties. Uh, do you ever take a listing, you know, is not going to sell? Um, sometimes, sometimes I, I did one last week where I took one and I didn't think it would sell and then it did sell. So, I mean, in real estate, you just don't know. You know, you really just don't know. Um, I want to buy, but I'm nervous. What are your thoughts? Uh, I would probably say that my thoughts are is that, you know, most people get nervous in bad markets, and then they look back on it and say, well, I wish I would have, or I know this is going to happen in February. People are going to tell me, well, in October, that traded for that rate. I'm going to be like, yeah, but that was October, and you didn't have the balls to do it. I cannot tell you in 2011, how many buyers I took out showing properties to, and they would bring a friend and their friend would tell you, they back in you know 10 and 11 and first part of 12, people used to tell you that nobody would ever own real estate again. So we would be in a car driving, showing properties, and the buyer's friend would say, you know what, dude, you're an idiot for buying, you shouldn't buy, blah, 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 and they would convince their person not to buy. And then in 13, those people come back to me after renting a couple of years and be like, you know, uh, I, you know we, we toured properties back in 11, I wanna buy places. And they would look at properties that, that were, on the market in 11 for 250 and now and then in 13 they're on the market for you know like 350 like that's the type of discount you would get in 11 it, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars and people are like yeah but i want to pay the 11 price and i said well don't you remember you're too scared to buy so if you're nervous to buy and a lot of other people are nervous to buy again that's why now is the best time to buy uh, where can people find you when you want to plug i'd like to plug the matt our website follow us on instagram at m uh, make sure to tune in our next episode and subscribe to our podcast. Thanks for listening to the Matt Lercy Project. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast, follow us on Instagram, and like us on Facebook.